अच्छा ओवर टू यू सर गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन थैंक यू अंकित आई होप यू एंड योर फैमिलीज आर स्टेइंग सेफ अमिड द ऑन गोइंग सेकंड वेव ऑफ द पेंडेमिक एंड थैंक यू फॉर टेकिंग टाइम आउट टुडे एंड जॉइनिंग अस ऑन टुडेस कॉल we would like to highlight the key aspects of our recent acquisition of implant assets from consensus orthopedics california and any and answer any questions that you may have last friday in the united states we entered into an agreement to acquire implant assets in the form of plant property and equipment inventory and patents from consensus orthopedics a company headquartered in el dorado hills in sacramento for a cash consideration of 11.45 million us dollars the transaction has been funded by a combination of internal approvals and us dollar denominated bank borrowings the transaction has been completed with no regulatory or other approvals required the acquired assets are primarily comprised of inventory and plant and equipment as well as patents The product inventory includes knee systems, mobile bearing knee systems, the hip systems, and the revision knee systems. In addition, an experienced team of over 40 plus consensus employees will be joining Shelby as part of this transaction to ensure continuity of business processes. This transaction is fully in line with our stated strategy to grow the orthopedics business, and the strategic rationale for this deal is very compelling, and is as follows. Shelby as the leader in joint replacement market consumes 10000 plus implants in a year and this transaction enables Shelby to procure quality implants at a competitive price for its own consumption in India secondly it will further allow Shelby to diversify its revenue mix by entering into a related product offering we will continue to capitalize on the acquired asset platform to enhance implant sales across the us and international markets to highlight to everyone these implants are all us fda approved thirdly post transaction our balance sheet remains robust with a net debt to equity of 0.04x and we expect this transaction to be earning the credit from the middle of fy23 onwards also we are pleased to announce the appointment of mr sushoban das gupta as vice president as vice chairman and global president of shelby limited and mr daniel hayes as the chief executive officer for the us implant business mr das gupta previously was vice president orthopedics at gnj american asia pacific he has over 30 years of experience in the field of health care out of which he served at johnson johnson for 29 plus years and he will be responsible for managing the hospital business and all the business heads will be reporting directly to him whereas mr hayes was the founder and ceo of several orthopedic companies coincident coincidentally also uh, consensus orthopedics and has successfully led the acquisition and turn around of three orthopedic implant companies as the ceo of shelby advanced technologies he will start to implement his 100 day plan centered on re-engaging with existing customers developing a new sales pipeline and selectively investing in innovative technologies and patented products both mr das gupta and mr hayes have an extensive international uh, experience of leading uh, implant businesses and they will be instrument instrumental in driving the strategy and financial performance of us implant business over the coming years so thank you and uh, we can now move on to any questions that you may have thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and 1 on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Anyone who has a question may press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
Our first question is from the line of Sudhir Bera from Right Time Council. Please go ahead. So good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity to ask the questions. Uh, sir, my questions are uh, like, uh, what kind of turnover it will be added uh, to the Shelby uh, in calendar year uh, 22 and 23? Uh, and uh, what kind of EBITDA we expect from uh, this uh, new implant uh, division? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, essentially uh, we have already made the internal projections for this project and uh, uh, you know essentially uh, this will start adding revenues uh, from the current year onwards uh, just to give you an idea so you know uh, we, we talk about buying uh, assets uh, from this uh, company but essentially we have bought the business i would say because if you look at the previous year's sales uh, you know pre-covid in 2018 the company did about 15 million us dollars of sales in the us uh, in 2019, they did about 11 million sales uh, in US. Again, these two are uh, pre-COVID years. In COVID year, they did seven and a half million US dollars of sales. So, you know, going forward, we feel that uh, the American revenue will continue to grow, and uh, over the next three to six months, we will be looking to get uh, the required approvals uh, for selling this product in India to begin with. And uh, from next year onwards, we'll be able to add the revenue. Uh, you know, coming in from the Indian subcontinent. And EBITDA, what kind of EBITDA uh, it will generate? This will be See, uh, uh, you know, uh, essentially the EBITDA that it will generate, so we, we feel that, you know, at the, at the moment, uh, the uh, company is having a, a kind of a manufacturing, uh, uh, we are using about 15% of uh, capacity. So, you know, once that goes up significantly, it will start adding uh, significant earnings uh, to the group. Uh, we believe that by uh, FY23, uh, uh, we will be able to make this uh, uh, EBITDA positive uh, company. So what you mean to say is 11 million or 15 million, uh, kind of average if we take, so 12 to 13 million sales they are doing is just, they are uh, utilizing only 15% of the capacity, isn't it? Yeah, 15% of the capacity utilization is for the year oh. uh, mm -hmm. uh, FY 2020. Oh, great. And uh, what kind of cost advantage we will have if we if, uh, procure uh, implant from uh, this division? So what kind of cost reduction uh, we will have? See, uh, at the moment, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, the, so the goal, yeah, is it the uh, cost effective vis a vis uh, Indian made uh, or uh, other foreign made implant? Yeah, so it is definitely going to be uh, cost accredited to us uh, from day one. Uh, the magnitude may be way more than what we have assumed because as we kind of ramp up the capacity, we may be able to come down significantly. So we are in the process of uh, trying to map that right now. Once we are able to map it, we'll come out with the numbers to you and we'll share those numbers with you as to what will be the, uh, the exact advantage but there will be a significant uh, you know advantage in terms of uh, uh, in terms of cost saving for Shelby. Oh, great. great thanks and all the best sir thank you ladies and gentlemen may we request you to please limit your questions to two per participant time permitting you may come back in the queue for a follow-up question We'll take a next question from the line of Mulesh Savla from Shan Savla LLP. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and thanks for taking my question. RTS, congratulations on this uh, new acquisition. But as I uh, understood from your commentary, uh, you have bought assets and uh, inventories. So how do you uh, uh, join, uh, how do you take these employees on your role? Uh, they will be new appointees on your company's role or uh, uh, they will be servicing in continuation uh, with the uh, uh, with their existing uh, employment so as i said you know we have uh, formed a company uh, under shelby limited which is mark medical devices that is based in india and that in turn 100 percent uh, owns shelby advanced technologies incorporation in the us right and now these assets are all acquired in this company from Consensus Orthopedics, right? 
Okay. Uh, now what? Yeah. So all the 40 existing employees of the implant business from Consensus will now be working on the payroll of uh, uh, Shelby Advanced Technologies Incorporation. And the benefit is that these people are in the system for the last 10 to 15 years, all of them. So, you know, they are very, very experienced people. And, uh, you know, they have seen highs of 18 to 20 million dollars in terms of sales back in 2015-16. So, uh, uh, you know, it is basically we are inheriting this entire team uh, onto, onto Shelby Advanced Technologies. Great, great. And uh, their appointment to our company will be fresh appointment. So we will not be having any uh, liabilities or dues related to their uh, past uh, service with the existing company. So, you know, that's a good question. And which was the thought process from the beginning? So the thought process was not to assume any liabilities of the previous company. So, you know, from the point of view of employees, or from the point of view of trade receivables, or from the point of view of trade, rece uh, trade payables, we are not assuming any liabilities, uh, you know, on, on uh, ourselves. So, which is the reason why we have uh, just gone for procuring the, the assets. Great, great. So, uh, that's really nice. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my questions and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Surya Patra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Surya Patra, could you please unmute your microphone? Yeah, and... okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my question. Congratulations for the transaction, sir. Good transaction. Uh, I will see. And uh, so just uh, uh, can you just uh, uh, give some sense what is the competitive positioning of uh, consensus orthopedics versus the global established brand? Uh, and uh, so that is that was the first that is my first question. And the second question is that uh, the professional management build up what we have seen now, obviously this is a big positive for Salvi. And uh, uh, you have already mentioned about your 100 day plan, but if you uh, if you elaborate a bit. Uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, the milestones that you have set and how do you be achieving that and how would that be benefiting Salvi uh, over uh, uh, next one year period. So that would be great. So if you look at the market in the U.S., uh, you know, it is certainly a, a very robust market. Uh, uh, you know, as, as far as uh, shall, uh, consensus goes, it has an excellent reputation uh, amongst the uh, orthopedic surgeons, you know, in the country, and you've done an ex extensive amount of uh, you know, channel checks uh, with respect uh, to reaching out to all these uh, different wholesalers and distributors, you know, who in turn serve the, uh, uh, the doctors, and clearly the, the feedback has been, you know, very, very good. Uh, you know, also, as you know, or as you may know, consensus currently or already serves this market, so, you know, setting up a more uh, efficient sales and marketing uh, system should enable us to reach out more to you know the doctor network. Uh, you know, with respect to the um, management structure, as uh, Shani had mentioned, you know, with the onboarding um, of Sushobhan Das Gupta and um, you know and Dan Hayes, coupled with the existing team, uh, which has been at consensus for several years, you know, we think we have a very uh, you know strong management uh, in place. In order to you know affect the um, you know affect the ramp up with respect to you know uh, the company, uh, you know specifically on 100 day business plan, uh, clearly a lot of it is going to be first in, in terms of defining the vision and the operating norms you know for the business. Uh, clearly you know establish some uh, operating procedures uh, you know really for uh, for all the different processes for sales and marketing. Um, again, as I said. There already is a strong uh, distributor network, which we hope to further build upon over the next 100 days. Uh, clearly, also, we have to, we're going to start ramping up the um, uh, production. Um, clearly, all this is going to result in, in optimizing the cost structure, which, again, will then start becoming comparable with some of the global peers. Uh, and the last but not least, with the view of starting to you know, bring some of the production back to India, Start applying for regulatory approvals in uh, India, in India, which most probably would take about six months or so before we can start, you know, selling the product 
or uh, in in the Indian market and, and also for campus co consumption with Shalbi. Sure, sure. Uh, I, I would like to hear a very good question. This is Dr. Vikram Shah. Yeah. I would like to answer this in little detail. It will take sure. some time, but um, it will make everybody's understanding in a proper perspective right. uh, about competitiveness and about how it makes sense for us to go and buy such assets as a hospital mm -hmm. industry people. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would give you one example to make you understand more easily. If you are driving a car, mm -hmm. you can drive Toyota or Honda equally well. Mm -hmm. If you are flying a plane and if you are a pilot of Boeing, hmm. you have to be trained for uh, Airbus. You cannot go and fly Airbus next day. Correct. Similarly, similarly, what happens here in orthopedics and joint replacement, so whatever high-end surgeries are, that uh, people come to go to high volume places to get trained in a right way and whatever the system are being used there they get trained in that and then they are hooked on that it is not very easy for them to change this so fast or so soon hmm. we have shelby is one of the largest center in the entire world for joint replacement surgery and we had been training surgeons from all over the world all the time for last 25 years in a continuation mm. and we have been doing this for all multinationals so we thought that why we should not do it for us also where it makes sense that we get a cheaper implant as well and we can train surgeons so that they can be hooked on our products so i have been we have been training all of across our shall we Hmm. Surgeons from entire Asia Pacific, Africa, Europe, everywhere surgeons are coming continuously, China, Taiwan, everywhere. So hmm. the whole purpose is that we continue training people with our system and then they start using it when they go back. So what we need for multinationals for years, we'll be doing for our own company. So it's not, see, why this company was not able to do that question comes to everybody's mind that others are doing why. Because they were not engaging surgeons in a proper perspective. There was nobody who was fathering this company. Now we are fathering this company and when we are fathering this company, we are going to train surgeons for our system so that that can be made popular. So it is a two-pronged advantage. One is uh, internal consumption where it increases our ROC by substantial margin in the coming time because uh, it is uh, accurate. Plus, uh, we are training surgeons across the world so that we can use it. And as uh, Mr. Shalen Shah said, that it is at a 15% production, we don't need to invest much further until it reaches 200%. Okay. Okay, so this is really interesting. Is it fair to believe this way, sir? So that uh, uh, it's a win-win for Salvi as well as uh, the acquired asset, because uh, since uh, we are creating platform for the global market in terms by providing training to the experts and uh, uh, surgeons, so they will since the product will be or device would be certified by Salvi or it is manufactured by Salvi. So then that in those markets, the product will get automatic certification uh, from the usage point of view one, and we will get for our own requirement at a cheaper and uh, qualitative product, a certified product, uh, in-house product, and hence it is a win-win for both the businesses. Yeah, and, yes, another thing is, uh, and another thing is some of these products are even uh, uh, you, uh, all of these products are United States FDA approved, so that is a very high standard, including yeah. some products are FDA approved in uh, Japan and also in Australia, and it is also being sold in Brazil in some amount. So, you know, there is a platform ready where we can start working on very systematically, and we have yeah. a right kind of team to work on. Sure. So, you know, the, essentially, because you, I think uh, you can be, I mean, your, your question uh, has two, two parts to it. One is that, you know, because the products are USSB approved, to get hmm. approvals in some of the other countries will not be a challenge for us at all. Uh, the second thing is the acceptability of this product uh, uh, will be much quicker, as Dr. Shah said, because the stickiness of the customer is very high once, uh, once the customer starts using the product. 
and uh, as mr murari earlier said in his uh, in his uh, uh, talk uh, essentially the acceptability of the products in the in the united states is excellent and the product has hardly any product recalls over the last uh, few years oh excellent sir so just if you can talk about allied product opportunity what you also in the opening remarks uh, dr vikram had mentioned which could be the potential opportunity going ahead so if you can just sustain uh, give, give some sense on those pipelines also i think the allied or uh, allied business opportunity would largely be you know uh, uh, the consensus orthopedic uh, uh, asset uh, asset purchase where we are going to be getting into a uh, kind of backward integration which is one the second thing is the implants will be used for internal consumption here which you all uh, which you all already know apart from that uh, the franchise model which has been worked on and it has you know kind of not so progress as we had planned because of the ongoing pandemic uh as soon as that picks up uh, you know these implants you know will start uh, being sold over there also and it has a great potential there and as i said earlier you know the american market uh, already uh, is a place where investors have been doing business since the last 24 years so you know essentially that is the biggest opportunity along with these other two that we have hmm hmm, hmm. okay sure sir thank you wish you all the best thank you Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nikhil from Crisp Portfolio Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I just one question. Uh, like uh, probably. Which one? We can't hear you. Hello. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity, sir. Apologies if there is a repeat. I mean the call late. Sir, uh, if I heard it correct, uh, this is a big data positive business, right? Like. Uh, it has been generating EBITDA for the past several years uh, since it has uh, been into operation. See, this business was a uh, EBITDA positive business uh, back in time. La- last year, since last one and a half year, the, the business has been affected by a pandemic, and uh, essentially because of that, the volumes, as I said, have come down, and the capacity utilization is around 15%. So you know. uh it is not ebitda positive right now but having said that we are not buying the business from consensus we are just buying the assets so essentially you know uh, as the uh, as you already know that in the united states the uh, the pandemic has peaked out long time back and you know uh, the numbers of elective surgery have started going up as soon as we are able to ramp up production uh, which may take 2 to 4 months uh we will be all set uh, and geared up to kind of start selling in the american market uh and over there of course we will first start tapping the existing distributors and existing doctors who uh, are already uh, you know working with consensus as well as we will work on uh, trying to connect with new customers okay got it sir sir and uh, any fair uh, guidance on like a bit of margin in respect of these assets like probably i just wanted to understand because these are some assets that we have acquired from consensus consensus and we will be having a ready set of distributors and doctors that will be approaching any fair estimate of uh, a bit of margin that we are having it in our mind yeah so you know as i said you know we are uh, mr sushoban das gupta mr uh, daniel hayes all of them are at the plant and they are spending the next few weeks there we are working on a firm plan uh, you know that uh, we want to uh, work on over the next uh, few months so you know i think in the next uh, couple of weeks we should be able to share something with you on the lines of uh, ebitda margins as well as the roc numbers okay got it sir but uh, like just last point uh, will it this will be at least what shall be at least uh, currently earning right like not of See, what i want to assure you is that the entire production capacity that uh, we are uh, acquiring can all be used at shelby itself right so all of the production can be consumed at shelby itself right so basically from that perspective uh, you know we will be able to be at 100% occupancy uh, and 100% capacity utilization and still sell everything to shelby and as i said we have invested an amount of uh, around 11 and a half million here so it has to be uh, you know kind of uh, such that you know where we are going to be saving some money compared to what we are buying the implants at right now right the only thing is i'm not able to share the numbers with you right now because we are working on the plan perfect perfect sir 
uh, thank you that's it from my end and all the best thank you thank you our next question is from ridesh gandhi from discovery capital please go ahead uh, hi sir i just just want to understand is this a is this a broader strategy of getting into the devices space and would we expect to see a whole host of acquisitions around this and or like organic growth around this or 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 because of the close linkage with this with it, with with it, the procedures we offer in india this will only be on this particular acquisition see uh, go ahead go ahead go ahead go on go on go on please go ahead please go ahead no no so uh, i was saying that uh, you know essentially uh, 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 the assets that we are acquiring uh, over here uh, are basically in line with uh, you know what we consume the most right because uh, you know we control about 15% of the uh, orthopedic uh, uh, orthopedic operations within the private sector uh, in india and uh, essentially this is in line of packet integration of that and we are very excited for this opportunity uh at at the moment and we will be focusing on this over the next 3 to 4 years uh and then thinking about you know what will be uh, what will be next for uh, shall be advanced technologies we got it. and just to understand how much is the inventory which we uh, which actually came along with the acquisition how much is the inventory to the value of the business in the business Well, uh, predominantly it is inventory and property, plant and equipment. Those are the two assets that have been acquired. In, you know, in addition to some patents and and trademarks, but it's predominantly inventory that you know forms the bulk of the uh, purchase consideration. Got it. So effectively speaking, it is inventory which we would have which we would have probably purchased in any case. So we've pretty much got the asset for free, and then over and above that, we can sort of optimize and sort of. uh help to grow and build up the business is that the right way to like look at it yeah so you basically got the assets in addition to that also an ongoing business right as we said earlier about 40 or people are transferring over uh the operations are going to continue in the same facility that was in the past you know the those uh, that is a lease property which uh, you know, shall be advanced technology is going to step in as a tenant so for all intents and purposes there is significant continuity of business Yes, uh, I got it. And on the really, point, it takes time. Do we do? It takes about two years to put up the plant, and another two to three years to get a USFD approval. So you know, we have got something where we are going to start working and start production immediately. So it's a significant advantage. Got it. No, but I was just asking as to how much the inventory today is actually worth. So to know. uh the, uh, how much we've been paid for the inventory as opposed to the ipr and the plant and and the no, so again and the, you know again we've had external um uh, external value as look at inventory and clearly you know what we have uh, paid for is is very much in line with those valuation guidelines got it okay and the other question is that who did the products is compete with globally and in india effectively so who would our competition be uh, actually in this so sort of right now we shall be uses this product but who do they also use and how should we be thinking about that see some of the players uh, in the orthopedic space globally are quite well known uh, so uh, they are say they are johnson and johnson is one of the companies there is striker there is smith and nephew Uh, uh and essentially uh, uh uh there are also other indian manufacturing companies like uh, merel uh, etc uh, which are there so essentially these are the well known names that are in the market uh, as of now well actually speaking uh, you know it's a oligopoly kind of situation there are not more than 3 4 companies in india in total with a organized structure and capability to supply in a proper way so there is not the much of a larger or larger competition it is all about service and uh, about the uh, inventory ability ability to keep up the inventory so most of the foreign companies are not able to do that in india as of now and there are three four companies largely functioning in multinational and one company in national got it and if you will look at this acquisition Uh, 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 let's say five years out, you know, actually, Leo, what would we see as the potential expectation? 
expectation around the like, revenue the potential or even double potential uh how so as i said you know we are working on that plan uh, right now i mean there is already a plan in place we are working on making it concrete and in the next few weeks we'll be able to share the uh, the for some of the numbers that might be helpful got it and for the last question but as i said the company itself the assets that we have procured uh, have generated about 15 million uh, in revenue in 2018 about 11 million in 2019 got it got it and uh, just to effectively and 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 uh, are there any operating or losses that we should be expecting in fy22 because of this acquisition and the ramp up is still happening or we expect this to be at roughly at a break even ish kind of level so we believe it will uh, roughly be at the break even level there could be a minor loss uh, as well uh, but we don't see a significant loss uh, at all got it and key risks that you see of this acquisition so as such as i said you know we uh, the biggest uh, risk could be that you know uh, as such we do not see any risk first of all uh, the second thing is that uh, uh, because you know also the fact that potentially all the implants can be used internally and uh, you know essentially in some of the franchises we don't see that uh, there is any risk in this uh, in this project uh, at all Good. Anshul, thank you. That's all for me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. Any participant who has a question may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Tikshad Doshi from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, one clarification: when you mention 15% capacity utilization. so that is for tw- uh, to 2020 where they do did around 7 and a half million uh, turnover right correct that's correct okay. yes okay uh, secondly uh, so when uh, they used to do 15 million dollar kind of revenue in 2018 at that time they were profitable or uh, even that time uh, they were not profitable So uh, in 18, etc., they were you know, EBITDA positive. Um, you know, the company had a very different capital structure at that point in time, which is uh, very different from uh, where we are today. So you know, from uh, from that perspective, uh, given the fact that you know uh, now the interest expense, etc., is going to be minimal, uh, you know, uh, clearly the the operating di- dynamics and the financial results are going to be very very different. Okay, and uh, just two small question. One, uh, currently, whatever they are selling, they are only selling in US and not in India or uh, Europe. And secondly, uh, you mentioned that uh, the, you know the entire capacity can itself be consumed by Shelby. So I just had a question that how much uh, so pre-COVID, let's say, how much would be the Shelby's consumption of such implants annualized? Yes, yeah, such shall be consumes about eight to ten thousand implants every year, right? So okay. basically, uh, and 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 this number is roughly growing at eight to ten percent uh, over the last two years. So so essentially, in the next two to three years, we will roughly be at around uh, thirteen to fifteen thousand joints, uh, and you know this uh, company uh, has a potential to manufacture uh, between eighteen to Twenty thousand joints with the with the current uh, kind of capacity, and of course, if required, we can always add uh, more more capacity in the existing plant because there is enough uh, space. Okay, okay, and they are selling only in US right now, right? Right now, they are only selling. Uh, uh, the majority of the sale is coming in the US, as Dr. Shah said. They have also sold in the past in other geographies as well, and which we would want to capitalize on. uh but yes you're right uh, america has been uh, the majority of the sales in the past for the company okay okay thank you that's it for me thank you our next question is from the line of samad singh from tpf capital please go ahead uh yeah uh, good afternoon thank you for the opportunity um so uh, you mentioned that uh, when the company was uh, running annualized revenue of 15 million it was uh, sort of break even so i think that equals about 30% utilization uh, is that for is that right for ebitda break even 
see, I think it's not fair to go with the past numbers because as Mr. Murari said, the cost structure uh, at that point of time was very different. Uh, and, you know, since we were catering to the U.S. market, which is a very highly, which is a very high margin accretive uh, market, since we will be also selling to some of the other developing markets like India, for example, in a big way, we will have to work uh, on the cost structure and uh, et cetera. And, you know, the the dynamics will completely change because of that. And uh, we will be margin, uh, EBITDA margin accretive uh, much quicker than the previous company. Uh, and so do you have any thoughts on at what capacity utilization would you be EBITDA break even? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as I said, uh, you know, we already have the plan in uh, place and in the next few weeks, we'll be sharing that plan with everybody. Okay. And just roughly, can you tell me what is the pricing differential for the product between the U.S. and India? The, as, as I said, you know, uh, we are not uh, able to give those numbers as of now. Uh, it is definitely uh, creative in terms of the price at which we are procuring implants at Shelby right now. Uh, but we are just working on some of the efficiencies that we kick in once uh, Shelby starts production. And uh, we will be sh able to share the definitive numbers with you uh, after a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may enter star and one on your touchstone telephone. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the floor back to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to say here that uh, there are certain still there are certain questions which remain unanswered uh, as far as the future revenue and EBITDA and uh, projections are concerned. We will make sure that uh, we are able to, you all are able to talk with our uh, Mr. Sushoban Dasgupta, he is our Vice Chairman and Global President, and uh, Daniel Hayes, who is the CEO of our American company. So we will make you all talk to them so that they can give a further larger picture of whatever we are discussing to as on today. In summary, this transaction is a major milestone in the history of Shelby Group. I am personally very excited about the development and confident that by strengthening the management team, at the same time, it places us well for a trajectory of profitable step of growth for the years to come. My personal focus area in near term are to continue deriving medical excellence across our hospital group working closely with Mr. Sushobhan Das Gupta in refining our strategic priorities and ensuring that this transaction creates significant value for the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ilara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>